Good afternoon, everybody. I'm going to talk about save the implants there and sometimes the second there. My disclosure is not relevant to this uh, um, talk. So Tuesday's procedures is heard remain the gold standard in the United States for management of chronic infections, but they're oftentimes associated with significant morbidity and mortality are costly to both the institution and the patient. I think while the principle for treatment of infection remains consistent across all cases, not all total hip infections should be treated the same way. And this is emerging evidence in 2020 that this is true. So why don't we dare to dare, which stands for debridement, antibiotics, implant, and retention. Well, initially the pessimism has been brought on by the fact that there have been some studies showing that worse results can be associated with a failed prior IND procedure. And even institutionally, we showed that salvage of an implant was unlikely past 28 days. But recent data shows uh, some conflicting results. This paper showing that while the, uh, the higher failure rate associated with a DARE, lower functional scores and higher wood complications, it depends because if you exclude um, MRSA, MRSE, and pseudomonas, the success rates are similar. Also, while the DARE success rate generally hovers around 67 to 70%, a fail rate recent data out of New Zealand shows no significant compromise in subsequent two-stage procedures. So in the healthy host, it may be a very reasonable um, option to pick, particularly during the immediate postoperative period. So for this 47-year-old attorney, six weeks following primary total hip arthroplasty with a leaking wound, I'm gonna assume that he has, he's a good host he has a non-resistant organism. His symptoms are less than three weeks duration. And we're selective and we're gonna do a DARE. And there's literature to support that. So this is recommendation from the recent inter international consensus meeting on pr prosthetic joint infection saying that DARE could be reasonably considered in patients with early postoperative PGA and acute hematogenous infections, no longer than four weeks of duration in a healthy host and then in, um, in someone with antibiotic viable uh, uh, that is able to treat this infection. While it's not immersion, it should be considered urgent because you want to prevent a, a buildup of biofilm should be performed within seven days of identification of infection. The addition of uh, chronic catheters where there's constant antibiotic infusion um, has no significant evidence in 2020 for this procedure. And then the use of antibiotic bees during these procedures, absorbable and non-resorbable are controversial. Some of them have been associated with worse outcomes. So I think timing clearly plays a role. If you ask the earlier, the better. If you have well-fixed implants, if you have viable antibiotic therapies for these organisms, and if you have, most importantly, a healthy host. Other factors associated with successful DARE include the addition of rifampin uh, regimen when combined with fluoroquinolones and the use of fluoroquinolones in cases of gram-negative bacilli um, organism infections. So this is a paper out of the Mayo Clinic looking at uh, irrigation and debridement and implant retention on uh, hip patients, showing that if you're A host or B host, i.e. a healthy host, your rates of retention approach that of 85%, which is just as good as a two-stage procedure. And obviously the results deteriorate as you have more comorbidities that could potentially compromise your immune system. Other series have reported success rates hovering around 80 plus percent with the highest success seen in patients treated within the first 90 days with median time less than three weeks. These results can be maintained up to one year as seen in this paper showing that approximately again 80 plus percent remain uh, infection free and even longer term survivorship showing 15% of patients with, uh, uh, um, with uh, a persistent infection require additional treatments, very good functional outcomes 100% effective against streptococcus infections, and then 10-year implant survivorship of over 75%. So I think what I quote my patients is that they have about a 78% chance that a, a successful DARE can be performed, particularly if they are healthy and they have an uh, infected organism that is susceptible to current antibiotic therapies. Sometimes you have to do a second debridement, as seen in this study, again, showing 84% success rate 31% required a second debridement because um, they were not responding after their six weeks of IV antibiotics and worse outcomes associated with poor or with the positive uh, cultures during the second there and then patients with chronic renal failure. If you have a positive blood cultures at the time of clinical presentation, that leads to um, worse outcomes and less likelihood of retention. And if you have history of rheumatoid arthritis, high set rate C-reactive protein, coag negative staph, 
and a latent infection greater than two years following arthroplasty, those were poor prognostic factors as well. I think it's important to stress that these patients require chronic antibiotic suppression, and one year is probably the minimum amount that they are required in order to keep their infections under control. And this is something that you have to work out in a multidisciplinary approach with your infectious diseases colleagues and specialists. Overall, I think there is, uh, the indications of there is evolving. I think we'll recognize that we need to have individualized treatment oh, for sir. infection, but more data is definitely needed. Uh, the addition of antibiotic therapy, such as rifampin therapy, has been very, very helpful. More recently, some people have experienced it with phages, and again, a lot of advances made in this area of infection. So in summary, BEAR does not compromise eventual results and should be strongly considered when indicated. Thank you very much for your attention.